Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to talk about replacing a light switch, and we'd like to thank D. Collins for liking and sharing the podcast. And if you've downloaded a copy of our latest ebook, Home Improvement Solutions What Every Homeowner Should Know, Book 16, we would appreciate a rating and review on Amazon. Five stars. The push button light switch was developed in the late 1800s. It had two round buttons. And in the U.S., pushing in on the top button turned your light on. Pushing in on the bottom button would turn your light off. The toggle-style light switch was invented in 1916. And in the U.S., flipping up on the toggle would turn the light on. In the U.K., flipping the toggle down turned their lights on. Hmm, fancy. This week, we're going to go over the steps to replace a standard light switch. What is considered standard? So if you have a switch with no electronics or smart features, a manual switch that you physically have to press or flip the switch to turn on and off your light, the most common type of light switches you'll find in your home will be a single pole switch, a three-way switch, a double switch, or a triple switch. Okay. Can you tell what type of switch it is by looking at it? If you have a single pole toggle switch, it's going to have on and off marked on the lever. Okay, what about a three-way? If you have a three-way toggle or a four-way toggle, there's going to be nothing on the lever Nobody because... has a four-way. <laughs> your mom had a four-way in her house. Okay, we want to base stuff on my mom's house? <laughs> oh, your mom's house is very fancy. Yeah. If you have a rocker-style switch, whether it's a single pole, a three-way, or a four-way, nothing's going to be marked on it, so you can't tell just by looking at the switch. So a rocker meaning a decor switch? Right, which is like a rectangular paddle style. You push up or down or right or left to turn on and off the switch. Without removing a switch, how can you tell what kind of switch it is? So if you have one switch that operates your light or a group of lights or a device, you have a single pole switch. Mm -hmm. If you have two switches that operate your light or a group of lights, you have a pair of three-way switches. If you have three switches that operate your light, you have two three-way switches and a four-way switch. And then if you have a double switch, it's obvious when you look at it, or a triple switch. Right. Replacing a single pole switch is one of the easiest electrical projects you can do yourself. As long as the electric is off. Right. A shock under the right circumstances can be deadly. And if you plan on doing electrical projects, you should have a non-contact electrical tester and a multimeter. Some top-rated electrical testers come from Klein Tools, K-L-E-I-N, capital T-O-O-L-S, Fluke, F-L-U-K-E, Sperry, S-P-E-R-R-Y, and Gardner Bender, G-A-R-D-N-E-R, capital B-E-N-D-E-R. Before you use a non-contact electrical tester to check that the electric is off for a project, use it to test a circuit you know that's on to confirm that it's working properly. Mm -hmm. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says there are about 400 people every year that are electrocuted. Wow. Let's start with replacing a single pole switch. Okay. So you can turn your light on if your switch is working, and then turn off the power to that circuit. Your light is going to turn off. So turn off the breaker? Right. Breaker. Or if you have a very old home, you're going to remove the fuse. You're going to remove your cover plate. If you have an older home and they've painted over the covers, you can run a utility knife around the cover plate to break through the paint. That way, when you remove the plate, it doesn't tear your paint. Remember how bad the wall plates were at my parents' house? Yeah. Like all of them? Right, completely painted over. My dad, and I mean like a lot of paint. (laughs) They match the walls very well. Yes. (laughs) But they were hard to get off. Yeah. Like every single one of them needed a razor blade. Yeah, a new blade. It's going to cut (laughs) through it easily. So once you remove the cover plate, you're going to take a non-contact electrical tester and put it on the sides of the switch. That way you're confirming that the electric is off and there's Mm -hmm. no live wires in there. 
unscrew the two screws on the single pole switch. You're going to pull out the old switch and you can double check the wires with the non-contact electrical tester. Then you're going to remove the wires from the screws. You're going to have two hot wires connected to a single pole switch and a ground wire. A switch is just a break in the hot. On a standard switch, you're not going to have a neutral wire connected to the switch. Right. If your home has non-metallic cable, the hot wires will be black or red. If you have a wire with white colored insulation connected to the switch, it should have black or red tape or it should be marked with black marker to indicate it's a hot wire, not a neutral wire. If you have a white wire that's used as a hot and it's not marked, put a piece of black tape on the wire. You're going to flag it and that shows that it's hot. If you're in a home with conduit, the hot wires can be any colored wire except white or green. White is neutral, green is ground. And if you have non-metallic cable, the bare copper wire is your ground wire. If there are white wires in the electrical box, they're going to be connected together with a wire connector. If you have metal conduit, you may not have a ground wire. The metal box connected to the metal conduit is your ground path for safety. Mm -hmm. When you screw your switch into the metal box, it grounds it. Or you could have a green grounding pigtail connected to the metal box and then connected to the switch. Right. The new single pole switch will have two screw terminals on the body of the switch and a green grounding screw. You can connect either one of the hot wires to either one of the screws and then connect your ground wire to the green grounding screw. Very easy. Yeah. If you're connecting the hot wires to the screws, the insulation should be stripped back about three quarters of an inch and bent to form a hook shape. The end of the wire should wrap clockwise around the screw and that's going to help it tighten down under the screw. This is called side wiring, S-I-D-E. Better quality switches will have a metal plate under the screw to hold the wire. Mm -hmm. This is called back wiring. The insulation should be stripped back about a half an inch. You slide the bare wire under the plate and tighten down the screws. And this holds the wire very securely. Switches with small holes in the back will allow 14 gauge wire to be pushed into the holes. Spring loaded metal holds the wire in place. And electricians I've talked to over the years don't recommend this type of connection. It's called a back stab connection, mm -hmm. and it's not allowed with 12 gauge wire. If Is you're 14 gauge wire common? It's common to have 15 amp circuits with 14 gauge wire for lighting circuits, but you can have a 20 amp lighting circuit, and you'd want to match your switch to the wire gauge and the breaker size, so 15 amp or 20 amp. If your old switch was connected with the backstab holes, you're going to need a small precision screwdriver pushed into the slot next to the hole to release the wire. And it should have about a half an inch of the insulation stripped away. If you're going to be connecting to the screw in the new switch, you should strip the wire back about three quarters of an inch so there's only bare wire underneath the screw terminal. And you should use a wire stripper to strip the wires some top-rated wire strippers come from Irwin, I-R-W-I-N, and their vice grip wire strippers are rated very high. Southwire and Klein Tools also have top-rated strippers. Southwire is S-O-U-T-H-W-I-R-E. Klein Tools, K-L-E-I-N, capital T-O-O-L-S. Once your two hot wires and your ground wire is connected, you can screw the new switch into the electrical box. For a single pole toggle switch, have the on off on the lever so on is visible when you flip the lever up and off when you flip the lever down. For a rocker style switch, the metal strap that has the screws on it where you're going to screw it into the box, mm -hmm. one of the metal straps should say either up or top. And you want that at the top. So when you press the top part of the switch, it's on. When you press the bottom part of the switch, the light is off. What if you're installing a rocker switch horizontally? So you'd want to set it up so when you press on the right side, it turns on. And when you press on the left side, it turns off. Really? At least here in the U.S. Huh. 
You're going to have two screws on the mounting straps on the switch to screw it into the box. You may have to fold the wires or twist the switch to line up the switch and get it straight. Once you screw your switch in, you're going to put on your cover. Then you can turn on the power to the circuit and test the switch. Cool. Why don't you describe the mounting strap? This is the metal that extends above and below the body of the switch. And this is where your screws are to screw it down into the electrical box. And the mounting strap is connected to the ground screw. If you have two switches that operate your light or a group of lights, you have a pair of three-way switches. To replace two three-way switches, you would turn off the power to the circuit, remove the cover plates, and use a non-contact electrical tester on both sides of the switches to make sure the power is off. Right. You're going to remove the switches from the box, and if both switches operated your lights correctly, you're going to mark the wires that are going to the dark colored screw terminals. What do you mean working correctly? So sometimes you'll go into a home and they'll have a pair Nothing of... works? No, well, it'll work in a certain way. So they'll have one of the three-way switches up, and nobody ever changes that position. And then the other switch, they go up and down to turn the lights on and off. And I've run into that in a few houses that I bought. That when you we were, wired? That, <laughs> well, when I first started <laughs> investing in real estate, yes, uh, three-way switches were troubling. <laughs> so if both your switches work your lights properly, so you can turn your lights on or off from either switch, they're wired properly. So in that case, you want to mark the wire that's going to the dark colored screw your switch is going to have one dark colored screw and two light colored screws. Your dark colored screw is the common. Mm -hmm. The light colored screws are your travelers. So if you mark the wire going to the dark colored screw on the old switch, when you put in the new three-way switch, you're going to take that marked wire connected to the dark colored screw, and you can put either of the travelers on either of the light colored screws. And it's going to work because on or off on one switch is just relative to the position of the other switch. All right. Let's try to explain <laughs> how a pair of three-way switches work. Okay. So you've got power coming to the first three-way switch. So you've got one hot wire that goes to your first switch, and that hot wire is going to be connected to the dark-colored common screw. You're going to have two wires coming off of the light-colored traveler screws. Those two travelers go to the second switch, the second switch, you connect the two travelers to the light-colored screws, and then you're going to have a hot wire going up to your light, and that's connected to the dark-colored common screw. So there's always power on one of the traveler screws. So by switching the position of the lever or the rocker, you always can connect or disconnect from the power from either switch. So right. it's pretty amazing. It is. What if you removed both switches and you didn't mark the wires first? So in this case, we're going to have to test the wires with an electrical tester, and a non-contact electrical tester is the easiest. You're going to make sure the power's off first. You're going to separate all the wires so nothing's touching. You're going to turn on the power, and you're going to test the hot wires. And there's only going to be one that's live. When you find the live wire in one of the two boxes, you're going to mark that wire. You're going to turn off your power, double-check it with your tester, you're going to connect that hot wire you found to the dark colored screw on your first switch, and then you're going to connect the other two hot wires to the light colored traveler screws, and then you can connect your ground. And it doesn't matter which wire you put on which traveler screw. Right. Screw that first switch into the box and put on the cover, and you're done with the first switch. Turn back on the power and test the three hot wires in the second box. And there's only going to be one wire that's live. You're going to find it, mark it, and then you're going to flip or press the first switch the other direction. Now you're going to test the wires in the second box and find the new wire that's live. You're going to mark that wire, turn off the electric, and double check it. In the second box, you found the two travelers. You're going to connect those two travelers to the light-colored screws, and that last hot wire is connected to the dark-colored screw going up to your light. Connect your ground wire, put the switch in the box, put on your cover, and then turn on the electric and test it. Right. What if you're replacing one three-way switch? You removed it and didn't mark the wires. Okay. 
In this case, you're going to turn off the power, separate the wires so nothing's touching, turn on the power, and find the live wire and mark it. With an electrical tester. Right. And then you're going to flip or press the other three-way switch the opposite direction. Retest that marked wire. If it's still live, you found the common. The other two wires are your travelers. If the wire you marked is dead and another wire is live when you flip the other switch, mark that new live wire, and in this box, you found two travelers. Congratulations. And make sure you always turn off the power before you connect the new switch. If you have a double switch, so there's two switches on one body, so it fits into a small electrical box, and this is usually going to be two single-pole switches, you're going to have four screw terminals and a ground screw. On one side of the switch, two screws are going to be connected with a metal tab. On the other side, you're going to have two screws that aren't connected with a tab. How do you wire it? So for a switch like this, you would turn off the power to the switch, pull out the old switch, and before you remove the wires, you want to mark the wire going to the side with the connecting tab. You should also mark the orientation of the wires to the other two screws. For example, if you're in a bathroom and you have the top switch going to your light and the bottom one to your fan, you'd probably want that orientation on the new switch. Unless you want to make it exciting for anybody that comes over. <laughs> All right. So the wire you marked going to the side with the connecting tab, you're going to connect to either screw terminal on the new switch on the side with the connecting tab and that tab connects the electric to both screws. Connect the other hot wires on the other side of the switch and connect your ground. If you remove the wires from the old switch and didn't mark anything, what you're going to do is, again, turn the power off, separate all the wires so nothing's touching, turn back on the power and find the live wire and mark it. Turn off the power, and you're going to connect that marked wire to the side with the breakaway tab. The other wires go to the other side. Easy enough. If you remove a double switch and you have two wires connected to the side with the tab and the tab is broken off, you have two circuits going to the switch. So you have to make sure that both of the circuits are off. You're going to follow the same steps. Mark the wires going to the side with the tab and these wires go to the screws with the tab on the new switch. You're going to need to break off the tab with a needle nose pliers on the new switch and then connect your other wires. All right. A triple switch will have three switches on one body to fit into a small electrical box. You're going to have one dark colored screw and three light colored screws. You're going to mark the wire going to the dark colored screw. This wire will go to the dark colored screw on the new switch, and I would also mark the orientation of the other hot wires. If you've removed a triple switch and you didn't mark the wires, you're going to turn off the power, separate the wires so nothing's touching, turn back on the power and find the live wire and mark it. Turn back off the power, you're going to connect that marked wire to the dark colored screw, your other wires go to the light colored screws. All right. If you have an older home or an older mobile home with aluminum wire, you aluminum? should... Aluminum? Aluminum wire. So this was popular in the 60s and early 70s. No, that's why I don't know. <laughs> you should only use switches that are marked CO slash ALR, and that stands for Copper Aluminum Revised. It's dangerous and against code to use a standard switch with aluminum wire. It increases the risk of arcing, short circuits, fire, and shocks. Uh -huh. Aluminum wire expands and contracts more than copper wire, which can cause a loose connection with a standard switch. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says homes with aluminum wiring are over 50 times more likely to have a fire hazard than homes with copper wiring. So it's important that you know the type of wiring you have with an older home and if you do have aluminum wire, that you're using the correct type of switch and outlets also. Cool. Do you have anything else to add? Replacing a switch is a pretty easy project to do yourself, but if you're unsure or uncomfortable with an electrical project, hire a professional because a shock under certain conditions can be deadly. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, 
Fix-It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our eBooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, Books 1 through 16 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at FixItCoHost. And you can follow us on Instagram, Fixit Home Improvement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you think you